Oh boy. I don't know if there's too many things better than old friends in a duck blind. It's always good to be hunting with friends and, and to make new ones too. love that shop that's the beginning of the day and I've been able to share it with some special people that I already enjoy being around I knew that you know everybody was there for the same reason the camaraderie and the opportunity to hunt a great place yeah this trip was overdue we all have fought wildland fire together and I was really looking forward to getting together outside of that environment ready boys Rock and roll. <laughs> Let's go do this. So in the morning, we kind of came up with our game plan, and we loaded up all of our gear, we got into two different rigs, and uh, we lined out to go out to the stand. Perfect. You guys ready? Kent forgets that we don't have a splash guard from the tracks on the Argo. He takes off and yeah. starts yakking, and pretty soon he's slinging mud off the tracks back at Bobby and I, and we're ducking and weaving in the trailers like a Bronco. Whoa, rodeo. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I neglected to tell him to hang on. What's your step? Woke him up. Uh, about half of the mallards and half of the widgeon in there. Okay. Keep them apart, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Where we're going to set up, there's a, there's a little bit of backwater. What works there, depending on winds, is uh, I like to set out a pocket of ducks on the left and a pocket of ducks on the right, which leaves an opening in the middle. So for that duck kind of going at and an that angle. That duck straight into the shore and then like two or three along the shoreline. Kent is a, a real master when it comes to uh, setting up decoys and setting up the layout for them. He just has so much experience in that area, uh, hunting the birds, understanding the, the weather patterns, the wind direction, uh, how it's going to impact the flight patterns of the birds as they come in. And it didn't take long for us to uh, get everything set up and we were ready for the, the sun to slowly start come up. We can do it. <laughs> 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 Where's our southwest wind? It's not here yet, is it? <laughs> What's that, Kent? It's anything is fair game today, except for Scop. I think Scop are still closed. Are you ready for a fair game? I'm ready. Bring it on. Beautiful morning. <laughs> Been waiting for this. As the sun slowly started to come up and you could just start to see, you know, the silhouettes of things off in the distance. And you get to look around and you can see the blue sky starting to slightly turn more blue. And you see the silhouette of the mountains off in the distance and the trees. And it just, you know, just warms your heart and it just, uh, you know, reminds you just like how thankful we are. Black Eagle reaches out there. <laughs> Great way to start the hunt. You know, I was fortunate enough that we had the first bird that came in. It was actually a little bit of a long shot, but everything connected. It gave me a lot more confidence in, uh, you know, the day and, and also my ability to shoot. Ken. Good boy. It's on the board.
So to the northwest of us, there's a no shooting zone. There's a group of residences right along the river there. The birds have figured that out and they like to go in there and they roost and they set up. And once they're in there, they'll attract birds from all over. Yep. Yep. him, I think. Nice shot, kid. Oh, might be a green. Yeah. So in the 20 is perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to break open the Vienna sausages for him. Mm, there you go. Yeah, it nice. was. Nice right. shot, Kent. Come here. It had been somewhat of a slow start and uh, just some ducks. <coughs> yep. <coughs> Amy. Ooh, that spiral. You want that birdie? There's Keith. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're all. We're hanging up today. Sometimes you just gotta. And watch the dog go to work, oh, which yeah. is pretty pretty special. Hand. Nice job, Shaft. Hey, buddy. The Shaft is 105 pound goofy black Labrador that just loves to play and hunt and retrieve. Been trained by myself since a pup. I got him about six weeks old. He lives for the hunt. He is one of those dogs that you're out hunting, he's got his eyes to the sky the whole time, and he's developed into an exceptional retriever. Nice shot, Bobby. Hey Keith, in that green box, there's some uh, pieces of metal that look like a horseshoe. Steak. Can you grab two of Got them it. for me? Yep, check the kennel. Yeah, no, he's, he just stood up and fly. Yeah, I just saw that. Good boy. Mm -hmm. That's a big flock that's up there too. Here. Jeff. Here. It picked up a little bit of movement on the river, I think, brought some birds inland and a little later, later in the day and they started moving around. Go, go. Good shot. Over. There. Good boy. Good boy. Pick him up. Now what? Come on. Andy. Nice morning. Oh boy. Check. Kennel up. Kennel up. Let's go. That was awesome. <laughs> Not going to give us time of day, are they? <laughs> oh, they're going to eat. Yeah. Oh, wait. oh what is that? Yeah. Hen? Looks like it had a white head on it. Any, any. Yeah. We killed enough of those already, huh? Yeah. The setting at Kent's Blind was amazing. The mountains, the water, the sun shining on those clouds. It was just beautiful. sure enjoyed the time together in the blind. We were reminiscing about old times that were a lot more stressed, uh, but now of course we just kind of laugh about it. Uh, really that's how we got to know each other for firefighting. All of us have previously worked in fire management. You know, after you been working with these guys together for 20 plus years. It's not hard to spend time because there's always something to talk about.
Check the camera. Did a little S pattern. Oh, come back. Oh. It was constant action throughout the entire morning for the most part. They were just not quite committed to coming into our setup. Kent was working the calls and trying to get them to lure in, uh, but they just uh, weren't interested and they just kept on going. <laughs> Duck sandies. Whoop, ducks. This little Don't teal. Jeez. Don't, Don't wait mess. for me. You guys got a shot. Dude. Uh, yeah. It came in fast and low. Straight up, 12 o'clock. <laughs> Gotta be fast. So, it just gets so giddy. <laughs> I can't right on, bump it, No, I, hey man. I'm just gonna empty I'm right my. On. I'm gonna empty the gun. I'll yeah. let you guys shoot from now. On. <laughs> no, no. That's awesome. Boy, there you go. the morning hours from sun up they're they're coming in and it'll slow down an hour or two after that this was kind of the opposite we had virtually no birds flying in the morning and an hour or so into it they started to come in i'm getting a lot of action though this morning yeah good mix of ducks and geese they're just a little high yeah. yep yeah a lot of the birds were just out of range, and actually late in the afternoon, there just weren't that many flying. A couple singles kept sneaking into the decoys, and so that gave me an opportunity to shoot a few birds. Let's see if I can kill some. Here come some geese. I didn't have my semi-auto. <laughs> we got that one. Yeah, we killed that one. <laughs> the other one snuck in the back door and Richie popped it. Stepped on it. Nice job. Nice job, Jeff, man. Here we're just talking about how rare oh, it is. You. I know. <laughs> how rare it is to what? Get a pintail. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Come here. That's one. We got a couple. It's kind of tough. The sunlight, but we got them. I'm gonna go grab the Argo. Okay. I was very fortunate on this hunt. I, I actually was able to uh, get a couple birds that I didn't realize were as coveted as they are. To get a pintail, um, you know, I don't, I would, don't know if I want to chalk it up to luck, but uh, I felt very fortunate. You know, I didn't realize what I had until I saw the excitement in Kent's face. There's always that opportunity for photos to come into play and get things in concept of what the day was really about. Bobby had a 
pot full of elk chili going, and we anticipated that. Cold beers and the opportunity to get together and talk about the day and in such a great setting like that. It's hard to beat, it's priceless. Getting friends together like that to spend time the whole weekend together, to me that's, that's one of the biggest parts about waterfowl hunting and hunting in general. It was great. These are lifetime memories. I'll uh, definitely cherish the time that I had with the three of them.